My name is Brian. Chapter 8. Brian, two points. It's the morning of the first big test in social studies. While I'm riding my bike down our street, I review the causes for the Revolutionary War. I only remember two. I decide to go to the resource room after lunch and review everything with Ms. Crandall one more time. I hate tests. When I take a test, my head pounds. I get so nervous about not understanding the questions that the letters on the page look like a foreign language. I can't read the simplest word. As I turn the corner onto Main Street, I swerve into the curb to keep from crashing into three bikers going in the opposite direction. It's John, Richie, and Dan. Hey man, where are you going? Richie asks. Where does it look like I'm going? I ask back. Where are you going? To get you, man, John says. Didn't you hear the radio? No school today. The only reason they ever cancel school over the radio is for snow days. I look up at the bright blue October sky and ask, how come? Richie says, there's some kind of an emergency with the furnace. They've got to fix it, but it's too dangerous to do with kids in the building, so no school. I look around at my friend's happy faces and ask, this is true? You're not kidding? Scout's honor, John answers. Yahoo, I shout, no social studies test. I turn my bike around and we yahoo and shout cheers all the way to Route 343. By 8.30, when we'd usually be starting math class, <clears throat> we're hanging out in our hideout drinking sodas and passing around potato chips. Through the shed window, I count five blue jays in the apple orchard. It feels like summer again. I think, these, these three guys are my pals. John and I had a little misunderstanding but now we'll get it back together. I decide to forgive John for bringing the eighth graders to our hideout and for embarrassing me in front of the whole class. I take a handful of chips and pass the bag to Richie. Man, Richie says, this is more like it. That school was beginning to bug me. Bigham is bugging me, John says. He's getting on my nerves. I'm going to have to do something to put him in his place. think you should mess with him, Dan says. He's too awesome. Are you guys still afraid of him? John asks. Didn't I tell you he's not going to do anything to us? He wouldn't dare. It's his first year here. He's got to do good or he's out the door like Miss Olgy. I don't know, Dan comments. You guys are such wimps, John continues. Just because he's black, you think he's dangerous? You're being prejudiced, especially you, Dan. I want to say that the reason we don't have to be afraid of Mr. Bigham is because he's a nice guy. But I keep my mouth shut. I don't want to be called a teacher's pet again. Listen, you guys, John says, if I do pull a joke on Bigham, I expect all of you to be behind me. What are you going to do, I ask. He crumbles up the empty potato chip bag, tosses it to me, and says, I'll think of something. His grin says he already has. I don't like the idea of playing a joke on Mr. Bigham, especially now that he's going through so much trouble to help me. So, what are we going to do now, Richie asks. Let's hang out in the big house, John suggests. I think, but don't say, just like you and Richie did with Mac and those other eighth grade clowns. A few minutes later, we're sliding around in our sock feet on the front hall marble floor. Hey, John, Richie says, this hallway is bigger than your whole house. John puts his finger to his lip. Shh, don't use names. This place might be bugged with tape recorders. Did he look at me in a funny way when he said that? Let's play hide and seek, Richie says. Forget it, I say, that's a baby game. But John says, it won't be a baby game in this house with all these rooms. It'll be freak out time. Let's do it, Dan. You, Dan, you be first. Close your eyes and count to 50. We'll all hide. Dan closes his eyes and starts counting. One, two, three. I don't trust John and Richie and figure Dan and I'd better stick together. 
I hide behind the front hall staircase with the toe of my sne sneaker sticking out so he'll find me right away. Then the two of us go through the house looking for Richie and John. It takes a long time to find them, and it's scary to open a door and not know what will be on the other side. We finally find John hiding under a sheet in a bathtub on the second floor, and Richie in a closet on the third floor. Dan thinks Richie was real brave to stay alone in a dark closet for all the time that it took us to find him. But I think he hung out in the room until he heard us coming, and then he went in the closet. After that, we lie on the floor in the living room, facing the back lawn. I watch the leaves falling off the trees and look for birds. I wonder what it would be like to live here, I ask out loud. You know, if you were real rich and could afford it and everything. What would you do if you had this whole place to yourself? First of all, I wouldn't be alone, John says. I'd fill it with beautiful women, and I'd get me the best sound system in the world with music piped in every room, and I'd have at least five VCRs and TVs, and a swimming pool, definitely a swimming pool. Me too, Richie says, and lots of servants. I'd put movie equipment in here, Dan says, <clears throat> not just to watch movies, but to make them. I'd get the best machines for doing special effects. Then I'd make monster films. Man, that'd be great. What about you? John asks me. I know exactly what I do, but I don't feel like telling John. So I say, nothing special. Just live here and have fun. But I'm thinking, first I'd study to be a scientist who knows all about birds, an ornithologist. Then I'd turn the whole estate into a bird sanctuary and invite other ornithologists to do research with me. We'd take pictures and write about the birds and I'd invite my grandpa Al to live here too. He could grow vegetables and take care of the orchard and build things with me. He'd love that. If my father wanted to come over, I'd let him, but the minute he was mean to someone or embarrassed me, I'd send him away. Tyson could live with us if he wanted, so could my mother, and maybe Hillary, but they'd probably want to stay home with my father. I guess Grandpa and I would visit them. But any time I wanted, I'd know I could walk out of their house, get in my big van, and drive home to my bird sanctuary. Thursday night, I study for my social studies test again. On the way to school, I review the causes of the Revolutionary War. I finally know them all. I get to the classroom just as the bell is ringing. Richie, Dan, and John are already in their seats. John gives me a big high five and grins as I pass him. Brian, my man, he says. Before I have a chance to sit down, Mr. Bigham says, Brian, could I have your absent absentee note, please? Yours too, Dan. For what, I ask. What note, sir, Dan asks. Your absentee notes for missing school yesterday, Mr. Bigham says. But there wasn't any school, I tell Mr. Bigham, because of the furnace, it was on the radio. It was too dangerous to be here, Dan adds. The whole class is hooting with laughter, especially John and Richie, who are also scratching their heads. Isabel is laughing so hard that she doesn't even notice that they're doing it. Mr. Biz Bigham asks, boys, did you hear that school was closed on the radio or did someone tell you? Someone told us, I say, told us that they heard it on the radio. Who, Mr. Bigham asks. Dan and I exchange a glance that means we're not going to squeal on John and Richie, though I'm not quite sure why. Some guys on bikes, I tell Mr. Bigham. When I sit down, Isabel whispers to me, an emergency with the furnace in October? You couldn't make up anything better than that? I feel like scratching my head and under my arms, too, right in her face. But I won't give John the satisfaction. If I scratch, he'll think I think what he did is funny. It isn't. Not one bit. It certainly is suspicious that all four of you were absent on the same day, Mr. Bigham comments. John's father called the school about his aunt's funeral, and I have Richie's note about his cold. Richie fakes a sneeze and a cough. But, Mr. Bigham continues, you two don't have any real excuse, do you? 
No, sir, Dan and I answer in unison. Mr. Bigham doesn't make us say who told us that there wasn't any school, but he's going to call our parents. I figure that Mr. Bigham is smart enough to know that John and Richie made up their excuse and he'll call their parents too. So I tell John that during lunch, I tell John that during lunch. I also ask him why he played such a mean trick on us. Who cares if Bigham calls my mother, he says. What's she going to do about it? And it was not a mean thing to do. I did it for your own good. You're getting too serious about school. You're getting too serious about everything. I figured you needed the day off to get back your Joker's Club attitude. Lighten up, man. What's the big deal, Richie asks. We cut all the time last year. I only cut three times, I tell him. That's why my father's so strict with me this year. I'm going to get in big trouble because of cutting yesterday. Me too, Dan says. Big trouble. Everybody in the class got a good laugh out of it. John says, and you had fun yesterday. Admit it. Not enough fun to make up for what my father's going to do to me. I don't tell them I'm also worried that Mr. Dithers won't let me make up the social studies test. That after all the studying I've done, he'll give me a failing grade because I cut. I'm about to bite into the cafeteria's version of individual pizza pie when the guys at the eighth grade table call over to me. Hey, Brian, there's no school Monday. They have to sweep the cafeteria. This gets a good laugh from the sixth and seventh grade tables. I yell back, here's something for them to sweep up and throw my pizza at them Frisbee style. It hits Mac on the sleeve, sauce side up before dropping to the floor. Everyone in the cafeteria is cheering and laughing. Richie, John, and Dan scratch. So Isabel throws her pizza at them, making a bullseye on the back of Richie's head. I get the joker points for the day, and Isabel and I get lunchroom detention for all of the next week.